In an MEM system or a mains power system, our power source is connected to earth. For many reasons, but for simplicity's sake, we'll not go into that here, but understand that electricity will and can flow to the ground as electricity wants to get back to a lower potential. Earthing systems are put in place to protect people and equipment. That's why when electricians install systems, they test the continuity of the earth system and also to make sure the impedance to the ground rod is not too high for current to flow back to the ground. The first thing we need to understand is how an RCD works. An RCD primarily measures between active and neutral current flow and while that's balanced the RCD will not trip. So here we can see the RCD current flow is balanced and the RCD will not trip. In other words the current is flowing equally through the active and the neutral. There is no current being able to escape or go down another circuit. So active and neutral current is identical or the same which we call balanced. In the situation that we get a short to earth, some of the current will flow down the earth path and hence the active flow and the neutral flow through the RCD will become unbalanced. So the RCD will trip when the current flow between active and neutral becomes unbalanced. And we allow this to happen and to protect people and equipment by creating an earth path which allows some or all of the current to flow down from the short caused in the faulty piece of equipment. This trips the RCD. So hopefully now you can see the importance of having an earth path. We use it and we rely on it to trip an RCD prior to somebody touching the faulty appliance that has the short to earth and getting electrocuted. Now if we remove the earth path and a short occurs, then the appliance has voltage potential. The current can't flow away. So the RCD can't see an imbalance. So the short or the appliance that the short has occurred in ends up having the same potential voltage. The appliance potentially could still be operating. And the person coming into contact with that appliance or any part of that earth circuit that is now live doesn't actually realise they have potential voltage. It is basically the same as a bird sitting on a wire. As long as no circuit is made to earth, that person doesn't realise they have potential voltage. The RCD won't trip because the active and neutral current flow is still balanced. Because there's no earth path, there's no current flow down earth. So the RCD still sees the balance between active and neutral and doesn't trip. But we do not want people or equipment to have potential voltage. Because not only can it damage the equipment, the person does touch something that does allow it to have a circuit to earth, or another piece of equipment with a fault, they will be electrocuted. The best solution to tripping power as soon as there is short to earth in a faulty appliance or a piece of equipment is by putting an RCD in and having an earth path circuit. We don't want this scenario where the person has potential voltage. If the person in this scenario does then make a circuit back to earth, then the RCD will trip and the person will only receive a mild shock. Our power source is connected to earth, so therefore he, the power can flow through him back to earth making a complete circuit. In this scenario, this person has potential voltage but no circuit to earth or any other part of a circuit. So again, they don't realise they've got potential voltage, a bit like a bird sitting on a wire, but they're not currently part of a circuit, so there's no current flow. So therefore, they cannot be electrocuted. In a floating system, this is referred to as our first fault. If this was connected to a main system with a correct earthing, the RCD would trip because current would flow down the earth path. Now, if we have a second fault, the person is now potentially electrocuted with no protection. Remember, in the first fault, 
there was no protection offered by the RCD because we don't have an earth path and the person does not know they have potential voltage. So let's now have a look at how a generator is connected. A generator power source is not connected back to earth or earth bonded to the ground. So therefore we've lost our earth in circuit. This is commonly referred to as a floating system. It does give us a layer of protection so that if we do get an earth short that we cannot create a circuit through the ground and back to the generator and therefore not have current flow. The only trouble with this system is if you do get a short to earth and you do have somebody touching it, they are a bird on a wire. They don't realise they've got voltage potential. The RCD will not trip, so therefore you don't realise you actually have a fault. All you know is that everything is working correctly, you aren't aware you've got voltage potential, and you aren't aware that there is a fault. Now if a second fault does occur, this person is now potentially electrocuted with no protection. Remember, in the first fault, there was no protection. The person does not know they have potential voltage and the RCD will not trip because we don't have an earth path. If a generator developed a fault while running and had a short to the frame of the earth system, then the whole earth system would have potential voltage. Every appliance on that earth circuit would then be like a bird on a wire. It would all have potential voltage with no protection. The first fault as such would not have to be in the actual connected system. It could potentially be in the generator for somebody to get an electric shock. So how do we protect the system? Basically that's what a duo does. The duo monitors the voltage on an earth circuit. So in the event that there is a voltage potential rise on the earth circuit, the duo will turn off isolating power downstream where all the appliance would be connected for the user. The fault doesn't necessarily have to occur in the appliances. The duo will also see the fault if it occurs in the generator, and therefore isolating the, the circuit so the user is protected. In an unearthed environment, on the first fault, we want to eliminate or disconnect power so that we're eliminating the risk to the user. Similar to what an RCD does when it has a good earth circuit. So how do we know where we want a duo and where we need an RCD? Well, we've made that pretty simplistic. We've actually incorporated the duo into an RCD and sits beside it so it offers protection in generally most types of electrical systems. The duo is suitable for generators, inverters, UPS systems and also for isolation transformers to add an extra layer of protection. It also can be used in MEN systems because it has the RCD but not only that if an earth circuit or earth path is lost then the duo will take over the, the functioning protection role. The duo has also been independently tested by a laboratory, so that, and this report is available if you're on request, and it shows that the duo does do as it's claimed to do. We have produced a series of small videos to try and help people understand the duo, and they're just very quick practical explanations of how the duo works. It sort of backs this theory up and if you have time have a look at the different videos and it will give you more of an understanding of this theory.